Asia Pacific, everyone's excited about that, right? Um, but you should have a good reason to do so because cybersecurity in Asia is relatively new. It's still in its infancy stages around here as compared to what you live and breathe here in Israel. Uh, but the thing is, it's getting more attention, mainly because what Avi has said, in terms of how we work with the banks and how we see the banks are actually changing uh, in the forefront in terms of how they work with the new fintech companies as well. So, of course, the banks will be very sophisticated in terms of cybersecurity and very protective about what they do with their data. But then again, if they're working with the fintech companies outside, I can say a lot of them have no idea what cybersecurity is. Now, I'll give you an example is um, many of the crypto exchanges in Asia, their point of um, their, their reason of, uh, or their, their, their method of cybersecurity is to put everything in the cold wallet. So if you know about crypto exchanges and crypto, well, putting it in a cold wallet is pre pretty much like putting it in a USB. That's pretty much their cybersecurity method. So it's pretty primitive. It's pretty um, raw and prehistoric as well. Um, so when we're talking about many of the things when fintech companies in Asia and how they're working with um, the, the banks themselves, it poses a big problem because number one is how do you match the cybersecurity threat? Because once you add in on t together, then the weakest link is from the fintech company itself. And especially in Asia, where there are a lot of un underbanks and unbanks, people with less data to work on the KYC, that's always poses a, a big problem around here. Now here are just some of the headlines about what's happening in Asia. Of course, there's gonna be more. If you need more information, I'm happy to talk to you uh, offline about this. But let me give you just a few examples in, in consideration of the time here. China's President Xi Jinping, uh, it, during his recent congressional meeting, he just announced that cybersecurity is a state initiative. So you can see that how important it is from a state's point of view, from a nation's point of view. Of course, in China, it's a different monster over there. It's very political and it's very sensitive in terms of cybersecurity. So if you want to tap into that area, well, definitely talk to me first before going into it yourself. Uh, the second thing will be um, smaller countries are actually running faster than bigger countries these days. So <clears throat> when we're talking about like um, much more substantive or sophisticated uh, cities, we're talking about Hong Kong, Singapore, China, Japan, Korea. Well, actually, Thailand, Indonesia is doing something very different. Now, Indonesia just announced their new cyber and encryption agency reporting directly to the president. So you can see how important they're seeing cybersecurity as a national threat or a national initiative. But then again, they just started it. So, of course, they're recruiting a lot of people. So if you're interested, well, you can move over to Indonesia. <laughs> Um, but then again, you can see how important they're feeling about this because um, now the second tier kind of countries around here, or the smaller countries, they are embracing this much more quicker than the bigger um, countries around, around their, their areas. Now, um, a few things that I definitely want to talk about is there are a lot of initiatives and when we're talking about the cybersecurity area, um, there's a lot of buzz right now going along in terms of virtual banking, digital banking licenses around here. But the, but the thing about cybersecurity in their caveat, in their, um, in their agreement uh, letters, it's only just a small part of what it is. And they're just looking at uh, third party assessment reports and that's pretty much it without going into very much detail. So in, 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 in a nutshell, in summary, a lot of these policies, regulations are still being formulated as we go along, as opposed to what we have done here in Israel already. So the good thing about this is there are a lot of opportunities. Um, of course, it's still an uphill battle uh, working with the, the, the the governments and especially with the, the banks. But then again, there's new opportunities opening around here. Uh, there's the new fintech companies. And I want to point you to the smart city innovation. There's a lot of countries right now that's talking about smart cities. So we're talking about autonomous cars. We're talking about linking up people with blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. Now that poses a big problem if we say, for example, a hacker comes in and hacks everything. So from a nuclear plant to down to your autonomous cars running through the, the crowd, that's going to happen. So in a way, they, fo they don't put cybersecurity as a top, but then again, they're putting uh, the initiatives and also the, the thematic topics uh, as a top, but then again, in these areas, there are lots of opportunities that they haven't actually talked about yet, but there's also very, uh, a lot of areas that they should be looking into as well. So 
in a way, from what we're saying, from the, the government's point of view, the banking point of view, and down to even the fintech point of view, and to something else rather other than fintechs, new technologies, uh, new government infrastructure as well. There's a lot of opportunities going along around here. So, of course, if you're interested in Asia Pacific um, news about what's happening over there in cybersecurity, talk to me offline. I'm happy to talk to you about that. If you're from Asia, if you're looking into new cybersecurity, international, global, top class of the world, talk to me and Avi as well. So, thank you very much for your time.